and welcome to another vlogmas video from me lauren from lauren and the books and i hope you're all doing very well today's video today's t-shirt today's t-shirt this is from last year Mer no the year before last merry Christmas. little red and white sleeves red and green sleeves cute green sleeves that's the song isn't it um today's video is a tag video and i have to thank um lauren from lauren wade reed she invented the christmas carol tag which is the tag that i will be taking part in today it's a series of questions based upon the christmas carol um and she said it was a gift to the people who were doing vlogmas and i couldn't tell you it is a gift to me doing vlogmas so i was delighted to do this and to mention some books um that i've read this year and years before and excited things so let's crack on with the questions the first question is the ghost of Christmas past a book that was a childhood favorite and I sort of feel like any question that mentions um, childhood favorites it's always I've always got a go-to answer um, and that book is uh, the line the witch in the wardrobe by CS Lewis um, this book is sort of like one of my earliest memories of reading and like picking something myself to read we were studying the line the witch in the wardrobe at school in year two how old is year two? Seven? I think I was seven. And um, I remember going and getting the book out from the library and paying 35p to get it reserved and to get it to get it sent in and uh, going and picking it up and being really excited about it. Um, and I remember studying it at school and we had like Mr Tumnus's tea party and it was the first time I drunk tea, I remember, um, and, and, and liking it, probably had about 12 sugars in it, um, and having toast with honey on and I feel like that might have been the first time I'd had honey um, and just being like really into it and just loving it. And I still love it now. Um, my sister and I had like this double video which had a BBC adap um, adaptation from that time um, and I really really loved it so whenever I think of like childhood reading the, the book that always comes to my mind is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. The next question is, the I've got it all written down in my little um, sparkly uh, vlogmas book, uh, The Ghost of Christmas Present, a recent book that you think will become one of your all time favourites. So I've got two here and one is super recent because it's like a book that I finished a few days ago and that's Nigel Slater, The Christmas Chronicles. Now I listened to the audiobook of this um, but um, Simon kindly bought this for me. If, I don't even think it was last year for Christmas, I think it might have been the year before. And this is a sort of memoir um, that Nigel Slater's written um, about Christmas into dispersed with um, recipes um, and his sort of routine and rituals on the run up to Christmas um, and then including um, Christmas Day and I just loved it and speak like this is just I included this in my gift guide because this book felt to me like such a gift it made me so happy I was so excited to, to read uh, to, to, to get back to it every single day Nigel Slater he is so eloquent and he speaks about food with such a fondness and um, just a love that that it is just a delight and a joy and I know from now on like I've had this book two years and I haven't read it I flicked through and sort of looked at it and also the book itself includes some of the most gorgeous food photography I've ever seen in in all of my years of, of reading food uh, cooking books um, cooking books cookbooks um, but I know that this is going to be one that I'm going to return to every single year because I just loved it and, and what I'm actually going to do I'm going to read it next year and it starts on the 1st of November so I'm going to read it as it goes on next year. So next year I will start on the 1st of November, which says here, a toast to the winter solstice. And I'm gonna read a little bit every day um, and, uh, and and almost like a sort of advent calendar on the run up to Christmas. So yeah, really, really excited um, to, to do that next year, but loved it. One of my, like, honestly, one of my favorite books ever. Really, really loved it. And then this other book is a book that I finished recently as well. Not as recently as The Christmas Chronicles, but it's Queenie by Candice Carty Williams, um, which is a uh, women's contemporary uh, fiction uh, novel about uh, a woman called Queenie who has recently um, split from her, um, her partner and she's had to move back in with her grandparents. And women's contemporary fiction is not a genre I enjoy. I do not like those books um, and I've tried to like it over the years and and quite often when when you're when you're a big when you're a reader um, people you sort of meet in day-to-day -day life like work people and things like that they'll always say to me um, oh I've got a book you should read you should read this book and quite often they're women's contemporary fiction books and on the odd chance that I've read them I've just hated them so much so to, to come across this and just love it I just loved it. It wasn't like candy coated. It's really real and raw and the situations that Queenie um, goes through and sort of gets herself into are just real life and awful. And I was sort of expecting it to sort of be wrapped up and have lovely um, like um, and, and sort of 
the blokes that she met were going to be really nice to her and they weren't and I was like well that's real life because in women's contemporary fiction it's always like oh and then he turned out to be the love of my life and there's also a big um a big sort of mental health theme running through here and this book um for me was the closest I've ever read to um my experience with mental health and anxiety so it had a sort of special place in my heart for that as well but I loved it. There was really funny bits. There's really sad bits. The characters are all so well-rounded. Not even just Queenie herself, but like her friends and not even, like her work friend and, and her grandparents. And, and like, it's all just done so well. Um, and I just really, really loved it. So yeah, that's gonna be one of, my fa one of my faves ever. So well done to those two books. The next question is, The Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come, a book coming out next year that you're very excited about. Now, I've got a similar answer to Lauren um, as, as this question. Um, because I don't really look forward to, I'm, that's not, that's not true. I don't, I'm not aware of books coming out. I sort of get, I get um, made aware of books when publishers contact me or if I, I watch a video and it's things like, that, and I see someone talking about a book that's coming out next year. Like myself, I'm not aware of books that are coming out unless it's like, like obviously if there was going to be like a new Harry Potter book coming out or something like that. Um, I'm always aware of the new, um, uh, his Dark Materials like themed books that have been out the past sort of four years. Um, but yeah, I haven't got anything, which although it sounds like bad for a book, bad? I don't, do you know what I mean bad? But like for a booktube channel, but I really just like to sort of like let it wash over me. And that way I can sort of go into 2020 thinking, well, there's new books out this year. Let's see what's out and let's be excited about it. So I haven't actually got an answer to that question apart from I don't really, I'm not really aware of books that are out in 2020. So that. Uh, but Humbug is the next question. A book that everyone else loves that you can't stand. So I've actually got two. Um, one's uh, a book that I read quite some time ago um, when I was still doing booktube and, and one's a more recent one. So I'll touch briefly on the first one because every time I mention it, people get so cross with me. Um, but A Brilliant Friend by Eleanor Ferrant Ferrante was just, for me, one of my worst books I've ever read. Like I did not get any joy out of it. I found it poorly written. I didn't like any of the characters. I didn't feel like any of the characters were fully formed enough um, for me. And there was just nothing that drew me to that book. There was just nothing. The plot was just so slow and boring. And I'm not a person who needs a lot of plot in a book either. Um, so yeah, but that is all I will say because every time I mention it, people always say to me like, oh, you, that, that's so rude. <laughs> but that's my feelings. I know people love that book and I'm delighted for them. I'm delighted when people find books that they love, but that book was not for me. And then more recently, um, I read a book called Breaking and Mending by Joanna Cannon, uh, which is a uh, memoir, a non-fiction book, because um, uh, Joanna Cannon, primarily before that, I believe, had only written fiction, a um, book about her experiences as a junior doctor. Um, now, I read it and um, I, I, I wrapped it up, and I only recently, when, when I wrapped it up and said how much I didn't get on with it, did I realise how beloved it was to other people, because a lot, a lot of people have commented on that video saying, I, in a non <laughs> in a non confrontational way as opposed to what it was like when I said I didn't like my brilliant friend um they said oh I love that book and it really um it moved me so much and and for me the book um being um the book which was about her experiences as a junior doctor it was really much more for me about death and about disease and about dying horribly of diseases and it made my head like it, it just did not gel well with me and it made me feel really sad and I was actually getting a bit nervous before I'd go in and listen to the audiobook of it and I'd get like a little I'd get in my car because that's when I listen to books on, on the way to and from work I get in my car and I'd like um I think oh god I've got to listen to that book now because it was only six hours I was like just get through it Lauren just get through it but yeah it wasn't one of my um favorite books but since then I've known I've I've, I've seen how how beloved it is by other people uh the next question is Bob Cratchit an old dependable that you always recommend and I have two books that I always recommend and I've made it three this year because I've revisited one of my favourite books from last year and it has become my favourite all over again um, and I haven't really got a, the best copy of this to show you but this is Sally Rooney Normal People this is a proof copy um, I read this last year and loved it it was in my best books of 2018 um, and I listened to the audiobook of it this year and it was, it blew me away again. Like, if anything, I enjoyed it more the second time round. Um, you follow two people um, who are living in Ireland, uh, Marianne and Connell, 
uh, that you start following them when they're at school together um, and you, you follow them throughout their uh, sort of young adulthood um, up until sort of leaving university um, and their uh, their relationship whether it be friendship sexual relationship romantic relationship um, with each other or with other people and one of them is always at a sort of different social standing to the other person and it's just written with such heart and it just feels so I'm aware I've just said this exact same thing for Rick, for Queenie, but it just feels so real. And like, there's parts of this book which I felt when I was reading it, but I felt like I was watching a play. It's painted so clearly in my head. And um, when I listened to the audiobook, it was exactly the same. So I found it amazing. I loved it. I yeah I cannot recommend that enough and I just I feel like it's a really good all-rounder I feel like there's something for everyone in there so I would always recommend that then Americana by Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie which is one of my favorite books of all time I always recommend it um this tells the tale of two um, two Nigerian um, characters, Abinze and Ifemelu, who fall in love um, whilst they're at school and um, Ifemelu gets the chance to study in America and um, that goes ahead and then Abinze tries to follow her out there but is unable to and has to go into um, undocumented life as an Im illegal immigrant in the UK. Um, so you follow uh, their lives together, their lives apart and then when they both return to Nigeria um, how they're changed as people and it's just fantastic. It's what, like one of the first books that made me um, aware of race issues, which I feel like is a really daft thing to say, but I live in like the southeast of England, where up until recently, I didn't see all that many black people around. Like my childhood, there was one black girl in my school, like that's it. So there was issues in here that I hadn't even considered. And this is the first book that got me thinking about um, race inequality and stuff like that. And I feel like that's a really late time in life to come to it because I only read this like eight years ago, but that was the way it had been and I feel, mortified about that but so happy that this book happened for me so I was able to see what um, life is like for for other people that don't look like me so um, yeah found it amazing and also the love story in this is just amazing I'm not a big love story book person but this is amazing and then the last book of course that I always recommend is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier I'm a bit naughty as well because Lauren said you're only allowed one book per answer but it's Christmas isn't it uh, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, an amazing book, um, so um, atmospheric, mysterious, um, sort of like sensual, the description in this is amazing as well as the plot, um, you're following um, a woman who is an uh, unnamed narrator who um, marries a character called Maxim de Winter um, and she moves into his house with him which is this gorgeous hall called Mandalay um, and while she's there um, she sort of has to live up to um, the expectations of what the uh, Maxim's uh, wife before Rebecca was like um, and then there's um, a character there called Mrs Danvers who's the housemaid who um, seemingly um, was very fond of Rebecca and um, yeah it's just there's just so much going on here it's amazing uh, the, the audiobook is also good so yeah any of those three books fantastic books uh, the next one is tiny tim an underhyped book that you think deserves more loved so i've also this is a bit of a i've, I've taken a bit of creative license on this question um because i've gone for the scapegoat by daphne du maurier now i'm aware that daphne du maurier is not an underhyped um author but out of her books i feel like i rarely rarely hear anything about the scapegoat and we read this for um, my patreon book club earlier this year and sort of across the board we all really really enjoyed it and as a daphne du maurier book i'd always go to rebecca for even when when people ask me for recommendations I'm always like oh Rebecca, Jamaica and my cousin Rachel like those are the books I go to but then the more this has sort of sat with me and we read it quite early in the year in about April or something the more I realise how much I love this so I think if people in the future ask me what Daphne du Maurier book I'd recommend I think I'm going to start saying The Scapegoat because I really really loved it so you follow um two characters who meet in a railway station in France one night um, and they are identical to one another. One is uh, an American, uh, an English chap called John and one is a French chap called Jean. Um, they spend the night sort of like drinking and chatting together and stuff and when um, John wakes up in the morning, Jean has taken his identity. I think it's that way around. So yeah, so then John steps into the French man's shoes, goes back to his house, um, meets his family who believe that he is Jean and sort of, <laughs> it it all starts from there really and I don't want to give much more away and you can probably predict some of the things that happens but fantastic book brilliantly written the adaptation of this as well which is I'm, I'm gonna sort of sneak this in now as a sort of bonus but the adaptation of this um, is brilliant it's got Andrew Scott in it and really really enjoyed it but yeah really really sort of almost like I, I when Daphne du Maurier books are mentioned I feel like this is underhyped but loved it really good next 
next question is today why it's Christmas Day a book that always gets you in the mood for Christmas and the past three years um, I have started um, I've listened to I, I actually own this book but I listened to the audiobook of Christmas Days by Jeanette Winterson which is um, 12 stories and 12 feasts for 12 days so there's 24 chapters within this book um, each you sort of intersperse a, um, a, a short story with a little excerpt from sort of like Jeanette Winterson's previous Christmases and there's a recipe in there as well and the um, audiobook is narrated by Jeanette herself and by Imogen Church who's a fantastic narrator and who I was convinced was the voice of Pip in the Archers but it wasn't her but I was so convinced I was like that's got to be Pip in the Archers um, but yeah there's a whole host so now now it's becoming like routine or ritual is a word that I've learned from both Jeanette and uh, and uh, Nigel Slater they've both been saying that, that word um, now it's become um, a sort of Christmas tradition for me to listen to this um, I'm getting more and more familiar with the story so um, it opens with a story um, about a couple going away for Christmas and um, when they're driving away um, they see a child left in a um left in a, 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 a um, like a superstore in a window um, and there's sort of like some magical realism going on there which is not something I'm a big fan of but it works perfectly then there's another story about a snow mama there's a ghost story a really chilling ghost story um, and these stories are becoming sort of like familiarly Christmassy to me so this year for the third year is the year where I've sort of thought oh I can't wait for that story or I can't wait for the bit where she talks about um when Jeanette herself speaks about Christmases she spent with Ruth Rendell um and yeah this just gets me in the real Christmas spirit and um I'm looking forward to to listening to this for years and years to come um and then the last question is the Muppets Christmas Carol favorite film adaptation of a book and I'm actually watching it right now so I'm in the middle of doing some Christmas crafts because I've got a Christmas craft day tomorrow um and uh, I'm actually watching the adaptation of Bridget Jones's diary um, and I really really love it I love Bridget Jones's diary the book it's a book that I've read on multiple times throughout my life and I always get something a bit different from it every time I read it and I've read it since I was about 14 and I'm 33 now um, so I always get something a little bit better god I've been reading that book for 20 to 21 years um, 19 years um, and I always get something a bit different from it but I think the, the film really stands up to it um, and I just think it's such a, a great adaptation of it and I love I feel like it's cast really perfectly so so that's my favorite adaptation so that was the Christmas uh, the Christmas Carol book tag thank you so much to, uh, for Lauren for inventing this now she said um, one of the last things you should do is tag people and when I do um, when I do book tags I very rarely tag anyone I sort of say oh um, just if you fancy doing this then do it but what I'm going to do because I've been watching other people's vlogmases and two vlogmases that I'm super super enjoying and I'm going to tag those people now um, is Tom from Tom Reads Things which I am loving his vlogmas so much I've just seen today that his um, his video is about um, a Norway Christmas market so, market, so I'm really really excited um, to watch that and the other channel is April over at Getting Hooger With It I've been loving her vlogmas as well so I, ta I, I tag you guys so April and Tom I tag you if you don't want to do it but it's a Christmas it's a vlogmas gift it fills one of your days guys um so yeah so that's it from me let me know um if you have read any of these books down below and I will see you all again tomorrow for another vlogmas video goodbye